Welcome back to Empowered Plates, Empowered Lives, the podcast that is all about helping you navigate your journey to healing and empowerment through food. I am your host, Giovanni, and today we're getting into a sweet topic, talking about the first thing, the first thing I needed to change in my diet. But before we dive into this episode, vibe with me, y'all. Welcome to the Empowered Plates, Empowered Lives podcast. Okay, 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 okay. So, stage four endometriosis. March 2020. But before we get there, November 2019, gearing up to understand what this surgery is going to all be about, I am meeting with Dr. Fox, my exorcism specialist. And we are sitting down the month of Thanksgiving. And we're talking about dietary changes and how it could help with PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, symptoms, as well as endometriosis. And he said, sugar, okay, sugar. And he started with fruit. He said that a Hershey's chocolate bar has the equivalent of sugar as a banana and I should not eat bananas now I'm not a banana fan only unless it's going into my smoothie I can take it blended into a smoothie but I am not a banana fan so I was okay with the bananas but he was like all sugar all sugar that's like including fruits I was taken back and I was just looking at him I don't know if you ever are in a doctor's appointment and you hear people telling you stuff and you're just kind of like in disbelief. And at the same time, it's like, nah, that's not sitting well with me. Not happening. Similar to that birth control story I was telling you or that episode, it just wasn't for me. And I'm like, fruit though? Like I I study health promotion. It's now public health at Coastal Carolina University. Chants up, C-I-N-O. And we talked in our nutrition class about the power of fruits and needing it. And I'm just like, how is he taking fruit? What is this endometriosis thing? What is PCOS to where fruit is a bad thing? Banana and a Hershey's chocolate bar. How do they even add up? And I listened and he was like, well, what you really need to do is eat meat and consume like a spoonful of butter. At that point, I just wanted to walk out. But because I didn't know what was going on with my body, I was sticking in that thing. I was staying tuned because, you know, as you get older, it's this thing called discernment and filtering through. Okay, so I was going to let him tell me what he needed to tell me, take it with a grain of salt, do my research, and then talk to some people that I do know a little bit better in trust. At this point, my diet was more of a pescatarian. And that pescatarian life was more like, mm, excuse me. That pescatarian life came about after um, practicing a sacrifice through Lent. And I took out all meat. And I only brought back in my diet uh, seafood. So at this point, you're talking to a pescatarian, someone who doesn't eat meat, only seafood. And you're telling me I need to go back to eating meat. And I had no interest in eating meat. No interest at all with eating meat, let alone getting in a scoop of butter. That that wasn't me. So I listened, I listened, I listened. I talked to a OBGYN, that's one of my sorority sisters. And she was like, You can definitely get fruits do have a lot of sugar in it. You have to be mindful of what type of fruit you're consuming. 
um, but it's natural sugar. It hits differently than processed sugar. Okay, I I can I can handle that, but it was this conflict of fruit that really threw me off. Let alone all the good other things of sugar I like that are processed, like cake. Oh my goodness! There was this plant based restaurant. Shout out to them. I think it's called uh, Sweet Theory in Jacksonville. At the time, I was living in Jacksonville, Florida. Amazing, loved it. I was a sucker for Krispy Kreme donuts, that hot now sign on a whole different experience. I love sweets. I had sugar cravings like most other PCOS and endometriosis people have. It's those sugar cravings that can really make us feel like a hostage in our own body. Okay. It was another scenario before diagnosing. I had a drink, an alcoholic beverage. And when I tell you that one drink had me so sick and I'm like, no way I'm a lightweight now. Like I used to take shots of Everclear in college. Not that I'm boasting. That was back in the day. And I love me some blue juice. Shout out to the Sigmas. That was my favorite juice on campus, the blue juice. Oh my goodness. I used to request that from <laughs> my Sigmas on campus. I request my own container of blue juice whenever they was making. Let me get my own little batch, my own little jug. But I was with one of the bros and we had a drink. And that night I got so sick, I got so sick. And I was like, what is wrong with me? What is going on? Like I, I knew it just wasn't alcohol. I had no idea. Alcohol is sugar. It was definitely the case. Um, so I realized that was real. This is November, 2019. He's talking to me about dietary changes. That December, my family takes a Christmas trip to Savannah. Shout out to the embassy. They have professional happy hour. I got a mixed drink there and a wine. Monty was like, it shouldn't do anything. It's lightweight. Felt nauseous after drinking that one. Just one, nothing hard. I was just like, I got to leave it alone. I got to leave. I just got to leave it alone. So it made me a believer that sugar was really an issue for me because of how my body responded. It might not be an issue to other people who could still consume um, alcoholic beverages, but it was a problem for my body because everything is different. Everyone's journey is different. Um, and that's the whole purpose of being able to talk about um, our journeys of strength. Those of us that come on this platform to share their experiences with PCOS or endometriosis or adenomyosis, um, things that I've been diagnosed with. Like I love to learn so much more about what they've experienced, what their journey looks like, how they've overcome. Um, but that alcohol and those symptoms afterwards, I was just like, I'm done. Alcohol, you can have it. Recently, I wouldn't say recently, but as of last year, this is 2022, I had to give away my paydays. And I love paydays. And I went for paydays because they were gluten-free. So I was still trying to stay within the gluten range. And I was trying to, you know, do it in moderation. Paydays took me out. And I was like, okay. It sounds like I need to let those paydays go. And that's okay. I can let the paydays go. Um, and the reason why I can let the paydays go and I can let the alcohol go is because I know that it's an act of self-love and self-care for my life experiences. I want to stop being a victim of my cravings and continue to eat things just because I know I love to indulge them when it doesn't make my body feel good after I eat them. I don't like my stomach hurting. I don't like feeling like I want to throw up. I don't like horrible uh, bowel movement. So I really just took this as a act of self-love to taking out some of these sugary, sugary foods that didn't align with my body. It just didn't. So I was like, Giovanni, I love you more than that. We can find other things that taste just as good that doesn't make you feel bad afterwards or hurts you or decreases your quality of life after you eat it because of course when you are eating it it makes you feel good when you're indulging 
But afterwards, like, I don't want to be slumped over. That's just not what I want to do. I want to have as many high vibrations as I can. And so what has helped me with my sugar cravings? One, juicing. I absolutely love a good cold press fruit and vegetable juice. Like that hits the spot like no other. And if you choose the right fruits and vegetable combinations, Craving satisfied. The second thing is a good smoothie. A really good smoothie can really help with that. I um, really like Just Move Supplement Smoothie. Black owned, woman owned. Um, chocolate cake is my favorite. I've had butter cream cupcake as well. Um, let me know if you need a little discount. I have a little code for you to help you with that first order. But just move supplements, being able to get a chocolate. I really want to try that apple pie, the apple pie smoothie, protein shake. I would like to try that. So that's another thing, smoothie. So juicing number one, smoothies number two, and then a good nut and berry combination, like dried cranberries of some sort with mixed in with nuts. That they're similar to a way I'm getting in my payday action because I like a little salty with a little sweet. I'm a sweet, salty kind of kind of girl. Like I, I like a, a salty, sweet mix. Um, those are my three main go-tos when I have sugar craving. Juicing, a good, good juice, a good smoothie, and some nuts and some dried cranberries or some sunflower seeds and grapes. I'm trying to tell you, it does not make me feel bad afterwards, slumped over, nauseous, or wanting to throw up. So I just wanted to let y'all know that, yes, the sugar was something very hard to get out of my, my diet. It was a very, it took a while. It did not happen overnight. It did not happen after that conversation with Dr. Fox. Um, but even when it comes to carbs, so it's carbs translate into sugar as well. So I had to also go through in a low carb um, transition, lo low carb dietary changes as well, but we can get into that in another episode, but going low carb also really helped because eating too many breads, it, it didn't make me feel good. It caused inflammation. It caused the hormonal imbalance. It, it's just not ideal for me and my body and how my body responds. So the way I make conscious decisions to change them and find delicious alternatives is the ultimate self-love and self-act for me. And I just want to motivate those who might be struggling with sugar cravings to find other alternatives that taste really good, that you enjoy, that your body responds well to, all right? That your body responds well to. But remember, every journey, begins with a single step, all right? A single step. And it could be a single step you take and the next meal you have, all right? So removing processed sugar was a major step for me, a major step for me. Um, but this step might just be the key that unlocks a path to healing for you. So if you think this resonates with you, if this episode resonated with you when it comes to you being a hostage to sugar cravings, I really challenge you to look into different alternatives as a form of self-love and make a mindful eating decision to try something else and see how your body responds. All right, so stay tuned for our next episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to all our social media platforms. Instagram is Empire Plates, Empire Lives. Uh, the main business page is forward underscore vibrations. And then like a page on Facebook for vibrations. YouTube, it's for vibrations, two, three, four, seven, I believe. But it is in the description of this episode. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for vibing with me. Remember, be intentional about being intentional and pay attention to what you're paying attention to. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Empire Plates, Empire Lives Podcast. I'm your host, Giovanni. Be well, love and light.